welcome you to this uh, lecture on marine hydrodynamics. In the last few lectures, we have spent time on various types of conformal mapping. In fact, the last one being very important, where we have talked about the application of a Zukowski transformation to ellipse from circle to using the Zukowski transformation we have used to map to a circle to ellipse, then we have mapped from circle to uh, cambered aerofoil, symmetric aerofoil and a circular arc. Today, in fact uh, yesterday also I have introduced, I have just in my introduction I have told that uh, today we will emphasize on a new type of transformation, again a kind of conformal mapping that is the schwarz christoffel transformation. Uh, this schwarz christoffel transformation helps us in mapping a polygon particularly a simple closed polygon to in the z plane to a line on the zeta plane. So, only before going to the details of this schwarz christoffel transformation, let us uh, talk a little about, let, uh, about to what I mean a simple closed polygon and uh, some of the characteristics although I have repeated it yesterday, let me repeat it again. So, when I say let me start with a simple closed polygon. So, suppose let us look at this, this is a rectangle, look at this, this is a triangle, though we have four angles here the total is 2 pi and here we have 3 angles, the sum of the 3 angles is, is pi. Now, suppose I look at another polygon, question comes what is the total angle of this? This is one aspect and this will be the second point this we know, but this will come to this. Now, the second thing is what I mean a suppose I have two points on a when I look at a suppose one point so what I mean a boundary suppose I have a point on this on the boundary and this is another point on the boundary. It is always possible to go from one point of the boundary to the other point on the boundary by following a path and this is the path and which never leaves the boundary from this to this when we are arriving we never leave the path and this boundary is called a connected boundary. I call this boundary as a connected boundary. The second point I want to say in fact this boundary what it does if I have or let me look at any boundary what it does it always divide the whole plane whole plane into two it partition the whole plane into two parts because of this boundary one is called the like this is a line instead of that if I look at this rectangle or this triangle or this we have we call this as interior anything inside the boundary is called interior, any point inside the boundary is an interior point, then we have the boundary and we have the exterior or the bound exterior. Any point outside this boundary is called exterior, ex exterior point, if I take a point here or a point here it is exterior point, but it is in one plane. So, in a plane we have three things, one is an it is an exterior boundary one is the interior and one is the boundary itself. So, the question comes now can we go from one interior point to one exterior point without crossing the boundary? It is not possible. So, from one interior point if we have to go to one exterior point that means we have to cross the boundary at some point at least at one point. And in so, this is what 
this is a characteristics of a simple closed polygon. one is the boundaries there one point to another you can always follow you have to follow a particular path the second thing that from one point to another point if you want to go from an interior point to exterior you have to cross the boundary at some point and uh, the other things it the boundary divides the points of the plane into two different regions one is the exterior region one is the interior region and the interiors are the interior points are such that any two points can be joined can be joined by a path which is again inside the boundary whereas two exterior points if we take any two points if we join them it has to be outside the we can connect it by two exterior points just outside the boundary so in that if they satisfy this any surface then we call this as a simple closed plane or simple closed polygon. So, with this understanding on a polygon and sometimes the word simple comes because uh, that every point on the plane is either because the word simple is coming because any two points in the plane is either both are internal points if you have to join them or we can join two points on this on this boundary or we can always go from a point to another point on the exterior and this is that is why it is called a simple closed polygon. Now, with this understanding sometimes we call this simple connector they form a connector system and with this understanding if I lay now let us uh, look at few more cases on this boundary. Suppose I have let me look at this suppose this is one boundary this is one surface let me say a infinity this is called b this is c this is d and call it d infinity so there are four vertices two vertices are at infinity and two are at some point finite point and this is this side is closed so there are three sides which are closed one side it is open up to infinity. Now, if I just say that two straight lines suppose this is one boundary this is another boundary and suppose this is called a infinity to b infinity and this is c infinity to d infinity this is a rectangle this is a kind of rectangle whose vertices are at positive infinity this is negative infinity and they both are certain distance apart suppose a here also you can say suppose they are distance apart is a but in this case this side is closed this side is extended up to infinity on the other hand i'll go to a third case let us look at a triangle this triangle i say that uh, a infinity this point is at infinity and I have b and this is suppose c infinity. So, suppose a infinity and c infinity they are at infinite and b is a fixed point then we call this and in a similar manner we can also look at this suppose I look at the exterior part suppose this side is closed. So, that means I look at this open region again here also infinity b and c infinity. Now, I look at another suppose look at a I have a infinity to this is b infinity and then or maybe this is a fixed point then then and suppose again this line goes to c to d infinity that means, this is the line which is coming this way and then going this way where what is happening a infinity and d infinity and coinciding and again b and c are coinciding it is a line which is coinciding two lines which are coinciding then I will look at another point suppose I have line 
if I say my, this is my point A infinity, there is only one point B and this is another point D infinity. So, we have two vertices and this is this point B is one point. So, these are some of the simple polygons. Now, with this understanding about polygons, I will just uh, go to what exactly. So, if from this polygon can we map this to a line, suppose these are all in the z plane, this is the z plane, can we map this all these things to a line in the zeta plane and that is on the real axis of the zeta plane, this is minus m into infinity of the zeta plane, zeta is again a complex plane. So, we can do so. Let us see how we can go ahead with this. And the transformation is what the Zukowski transformation we talk about. Now, this is what uh, the Zukowski transformation tells. So, that let me say what about the theorem of Zukowski. theorem of Schwarz Christopher. If the theorem says let A B C B endpoints on the endpoints on the real axis of my zeta plane. I have two planes, I will come to that such that A is less than B is less than C is less than there are n such points. Let alpha, beta, gamma they are the are the interior angles. of a simple closed polygon having n vertices. Having n vertices such that alpha plus beta plus gamma plus, plus all these angles interior angles together is n minus 2 into pi. Then the transformation then the transformation from zeta plane to z plane given by dz by d zeta is equal to k zeta minus a to the power alpha by pi minus 1 zeta minus b to the power beta by pi minus 1 up to again you can solve zeta minus c to the power gamma by pi minus 1 dot dot. So, all these n vertices transform the real axis in the zeta plane into the boundary of a closed polygon. in the z plane. Okay. 
uh, boundary preclude in this in such a way in such a manner so that the vertices of the polygon corresponds to the to the points a b c and the interior angles on the corresponding interior. and the interior angle of the polygon or alpha, beta, gamma respectively. For the when the polygon is simple, simple, the interior of the polygon is mapped of the polygon maps the Upper, upper half of the the zeta plane and here in this transmission with k being a constant which may be real or real or complex. So, this is what uh, the Christopher transformation although it looks a little lengthy, but things are very clear because basically we are defining one transformation one function d z by d zeta and which is, but what will happen if the point is because all these points I have considered as finite point. Suppose any of this point a n is infinity or if any of this point infinity then what will happen? That means, if one of the point is at infinity, then this point will not appear in the transformation. Like suppose to show that I can always adjust my k, let me just say that one of the term, I can adjust my k so that this point I can make it. Let us look at k into j minus a into the power, let me call this as alpha n by pi minus 1 and to do that I can also k if I choose properly that I will call it k as a into minus a n to the power because k can be a complex number 1 minus alpha n by pi and then the term associated with k is zeta minus a n into alpha n by pi minus 1 and that will give me a into 1 minus zeta by a into the power alpha n by pi minus 1 and once this is there then when and this will tend to a as my a n will tend to infinity. So, because of that what will happen this term the nth term when a n is infinity, I can switch will adjust my constant k because this is a constant. So, that this will not contribute, this will not contribute. So, because it is coming back to a, 
it is another complex constant. So, this constant can be added because this constant is a which can be chosen properly this constant k which is not known it has to be chosen depending on the characteristics of the transformation we are doing or depending on the kind of polygon we are choosing. So, you can always adjust this a particularly k so that similarly if we will say that suppose a n is at minus infinity if I say a n is minus infinity you can also say that that term will not contribute to the. So, any point so only the finite points will contribute if I have n such or vertices the vertices which are at only finite points they will contribute to the transformation other points will not contribute to the points at infinity the vertices at infinity will not contribute to the transformation this is what this helps uh, in a many way to solve simplify the problem to a large extent. Now, let us uh, map a semi infinite strip will have a better very clear understanding on this once we work out few example semi infinite strip. Suppose, this is the my z plane in the z plane let me call this let me call one vertices is at infinity this is fixed at b this is c and this is my y axis and this is my uh, d infinity this is the x axis rather this is the x axis now i'll take uh, because this i will this is my zeta plane in the zeta plane what i will do i have to map this to a line on the zeta plane so as usual i'll say let a infinity be this point and I choose my b is a finite and this distance is let this distance be between the two lines is a then b I call it minus 1 let me choose another point that c point I call it as 1 and d infinity is at infinity. So, this strip now a infinity b c d d infinity in the z plane is now will map this to the zeta plane a infinity to d a infinity b c d then what will be my transformation as usual as I have just mentioned that uh, two vertices at infinity they will not contribute to the transformation and again. So, I have the four vertices here at in this plane zeta is minus infinity minus 1 1 and infinity. So, this vertices at these two ends will not contribute to the transformation. Hence, by Schwarz Christopher theorem, the only points that will contribute to the transformation is the points B and C. Then I can also write the transformation will give me d zeta d z by d zeta will be k times zeta plus 1, where this point is a is a to the power, and then this angle is what? this is alpha by pi this angle is pi by 2. So, this is 1 by 2 pi by 2 minus 1. So, this will be minus half and again this point is again this angle is pi by 2 where these are the vertices the angle made uh, by b and c and this will be again j minus 1 to the power alpha by beta alpha is pi by 2 minus 1 that will be again minus half and that will be and this gives me k by zeta square minus 1 root over. So, this is the transformation where we will map this plane to this plane. Now, what exactly it will give me? It will give me d z will be k rather d z will be k d zeta by zeta square minus 1. If I simplify this, I will get z is equal to k d zeta by integral d zeta by zeta square minus 1 and that will give me k cos hyperbolic inverse zeta plus l, l is a constant. Now, I want to know what is my l then I will completely know. Now, we know one of the characteristic of cos hyperbolic uh, inverse 
x that is equal to log of x plus x square minus 1. If I look at this characteristics because that simplifies this whole exercise. Now, I have already got my then that itself says cos hyperbolic inverse 1 is equal to log of 1 plus 1 minus 1 that is basically log 1 log 1 is 0 and again what will happen to cos hyperbolic inverse minus 1 because these are the two points and then that will give me log of minus 1 and that will give i pi that means. So, now I have z is equal to cos hyperbolic inverse cos hyperbolic inverse zeta plus l. So, if I put 0 what will happen to because I have two unknowns here or oh sorry k times I have two unknowns k and l if I put cos hyperbolic inverse 1 because I have two points zeta at minus 1 and 1. So, if I put z is equal to and this point will refer to z is equal to 0 because I have the if I have look at my this thing this point is z is equal to 0 and this point is nothing but in the z plane this point is z is equal to the y direction this is i a because this is i this is a. So, this point will be in the y axis so this is i a. So, if I put this z is equal to 0. So, that means my z is equal to 0 gives k cos hyperbolic inverse zeta is referring to the in the zeta plane this is this is my b c the corresponding if it z is 0 here the this point is referring to c and c is nothing but 1. So, this is cos hyperbolic inverse 1 plus l a cos hyperbolic inverse 1 is 0. So, it is give my l is 0. Now, second thing if I will go back to this point this point is i a if it is i a then this is k times cos hyperbolic inverse because this point here refers to the point b here and b is nothing but minus 1 and this is k cos hyperbolic inverse minus 1 is i pi. So, which gives me my k is equal to a by pi and l is equal to 0 once I know k and l then my transformation zeta is equal to a by pi into cos hyperbolic inverse zeta sorry z is equal to which implies my zeta is equal to cos of pi by z by a this is the transformation. Now, I will go to another example this is a very simple example we have seen that the by this transformation from a semi infinite strip we can map in the z plane to a line in the zeta plane. Now, let us see let us take another example because uh, I will just show few examples to make it clear what is this. Mapping an infinite strip, it was a semi infinite strip in the beginning. Now, let us see if we have an infinite strip. If I have an infinite strip, then how it will look like? So, and let me say the again this distance between the two strips is a. So, this point will be let me call this a infinity, this is b infinity, this point is called c infinity, this is d infinity. Let me say this is the boundary of this. and this is my y axis this is my x axis. So, this distance is j. So, this point is i a and this point is 0 0 0. 
now this is the z plane I map this my zeta plane in the zeta plane. So, a infinity I call this here and then I have a point I have two points this point let me call it as f and this point is called as o. So, now if a infinity is here then I have to somewhere b and b infinity and c infinity let me call these points as uh, origin as b comma c let me say because both I put it as a common point at origin because I am this is a uh, infinity to infinity minus infinity to infinity this is again minus infinity to infinity. So, I call this as b c and then my f I call it as minus 1 this is my f and then I have a point o this o I will call it as 1 and then as usual I have d infinity. If I choose this accordingly, so I am able to cover each point on this line with one of the points in this plane. Now, let us see then what will happen to the in this line a infinity at d the contribution from a infinity and d infinity will be 0. So, okay, so what will happen? Now, the angle here is also 0, angle here is also 0. If these two angles are 0, now you have 4 vertices 1, 2, 3, 4. So, angle here, but this point is referred to here as origin, this point is also referred to the same point origin. So, because of that and the angle is 0. So, then in the process my d z by d zeta will be k times because the points this point this point will not contribute and the points now b infinity c infinity will refer to the point c and b and c this is the origin and here the angle is it makes the angle 0. So, this will be k zeta to the power minus 1 in the process because they both are referred to the same point here. If k zeta to the power point 0.1 then what will happen to my z? That is equal to k log zeta plus some constant l which implies where is l is n l is unknown. Now, again to find l what will happen at zeta is equal to zeta if zeta is equal to 1 this is the point here and zeta is equal to 1 refers to 0. So, z is 0 means k and zeta is equal to 1 ln 1 is 0. So, this is l is equal to 0. Now, if I put this is by considering I have taken z is equal to 0 at zeta is equal to 1. Now, suppose I take z is equal to i a this point because this point will be i a and this point I am referring to minus 1 is equal to k ln minus 1 and ln minus 1 is k minus 1 is i pi which implies k is equal to a by pi and which implies this implies my z will be l is 0 k j by pi. So, z is equal to a by pi ln zeta which implies zeta is equal to e to the power pi z by a. Now, what will happen if I consider a particular flow? So, suppose I consider this as a channel, let us work out one example. I consider this as a channel A infinity, B infinity, this is my C infinity, and this is my D infinity. And here in the zeta plane, I have A infinity, this is my D infinity this point suppose is a b c this is origin. Suppose you have a uniform flow in a channel we consider the uniform flow 
in the channel. There is a uniform flow in a channel with parallel sides. While the lines of equal velocity are perpendicular to the sides, the uniform flow it can be regarded as due to a source at infinity. So, when I say uniform flow as if there is a source at infinity and that is and again this fluid is again moving to the side. And this is there is this that means there is a sink at infinity here. The same thing if what will happen here. So, if I put it in this way, so I can always also say that as if there is a fluid which is flowing in both from this point. Like this is also it is behaving like a this is a uniform flow, but here it will like like a source from which the fluid is going out. So, on the other hand if I say if I say my fluid direction is this the opposite direction then I can also from here I can always find that instead of a source this can behave like a sink and in that case my zeta can be minus e to the minus pi z by a. So, it is a flow in a channel this is like a source I am able to represent it by a source. Now, I will take suppose if what will happen if in the same channel I consider Suppose E, I consider the origin that is midway between B and C, midway between the channel, E is the origin between midway between the channel. So, then I have A infinity, I have B infinity, then I have B C here, I will have a point, I have B C here. then and that is origin. So, if I take this origin here then what will happen my z plus i a by 2 this will be given by a by pi ln zeta instead of o origin here if I shift the origin somewhere here it is the origin then this origin will be this representation will be and in that process also you can see then if you do that then what will happen to my zeta which implies zeta will be i times e to the power pi z by a. So, this is another example. Now, uh, let us take a different example one more example because basically to with few examples we will be able to clarify that how this transformation is what is happening to this transformation. A step step in the bed of a deep stream. In fact, this uh, transformation in earlier days was uh, used to discuss the flow pattern in a channel of various uh, uh, depth or a channel of various cross section and uh, map it because the solutions uh, to analyze the solution it was one of the easiest way. Suppose, I say I have a channel. there is a change sudden change of level at this point I call it as a infinity this is B this point is C and this is called the infinity it is open it is a stream 
then if I represent this by this line, then you can al also find, let me say that suppose there is a fluid which is flowing at velocity u here and here this angle will be pi by 2, this angle will be 3 pi by 2 and the fluid is will be flowing in this way. Suppose this is the way, the, this is the direction in which the fluid is flowing. Then and let me say, so this is again a simple polygon because any point this can act as a boundary and so similarly I will call this a infinity, I will take this point as b as minus 1 and this distance is called a b as minus 1, I have c is 1 then I have d infinity and let me say the fluid speed is Hence, if this, these are the points we represent, then what will happen to my dz by d zeta will be k and that will give us b is at 3 pi by 2 angle and b is minus 1. So, this is zeta plus 1, it is uh, alpha by pi minus 1. So, that means alpha is 3 pi by 2 by 2 is 3 by 2 minus 1 is half and this is uh, this point is at pi by 2. So, this will be zeta minus 1 to the power minus half and the contribution from this end and this end will not come into picture. So, d z by d zeta is this. So, which uh, we can write it as k zeta by zeta square minus 1 plus k by square minus 1 root over. So, this is the simplification this is when d z by d zeta. If you simplify this which implies I integrate it z will be k root over of zeta square minus 1 plus this part is cos hyperbolic inverse zeta again plus a constant of integration. So, if you assume that point in the z plane, the point c as a 0 0 and this distance is it is of depth h. So, my b c if this distance is h then what will happen at z is equal to. So, if I put z is equal to 0, z is equal to 0, 0 refers to the point 1 zeta is 1, zeta is 1 means this is 0, this is 0, this will be. So, that will give me L as 0 assuming z is equal to 0 at zeta is equal to 1. In a similar manner, if I take L is i h, this will be z is equal to i h at zeta is equal to minus 1, then that will give me k I can easily find out k is equal to h by pi sorry this will give me k is h by pi. So, this will refer to this point. So, if that is the case then what I will get hence my z will be h by pi to zeta square minus 1 root over plus cos hyperbolic inverse zeta. So, this is my transformation. In the same manner, suppose this is my last example which I will show just to Suppose I take it, suppose I have a channel, I will not just briefly mention this about. If this is a channel, so I have a infinity, I have b infinity, let me have c infinity, 
this is I will call it as a D, this is point is E, this point is F infinity. Let me say that this depth is H and there is a fluid which is flowing at a speed u and this is let me say this is k and again the same fluid is flowing here. So, here the speed will be u h by k by continuity equation this will be the speed here at which the fluid will be flowing. And here what will happen here I can map it on this line a infinity I will have B C because this two I like the previous case I will consider this as a single point and this point and then I have D this point I call this as 1 this is B C this is a D and uh, E is call it as A and then I have another point that is F infinity. So, then if I look at the transformation by I apply the schwarz christopoul theorem then I can have dz by d zeta is equal to k zeta inverse. I can easily see that it to minus 1 to the power half like the if I look at the previous two cases it uh, minus a to the power minus half. So, here I have to know what is k what is and then if I easily So, this will be my transformation. So, if in the this is a little complex and to determine k a and because if I solve this the whole algebra is a little complex and I refer to you to have a look at the mill and Thompson. Book of Mill and Thompson theoretical hydrodynamics. this uh, a book by on theoretical hydrodynamics in Milner Thompson you can again simplify this because this is a little algebraically little complex. So, I am not going to further detail here, but I have made it very clear that this can be and this constants can be obtained a k and again if you integrate it will get integration constant and uh, this what will give you the results associated with this uh, transformation. And what we have seen from this that by using we are taken again we have seen here that if we have a polygon if we have a polygon then we are seen that the total angles suffer a simple closed polygon. We have seen that our alpha plus beta plus gamma sorry plus gamma if I have n n such vertices and then total is n minus 2 into pi that means, I am assuming the all the angle together is giving me together is n minus 2 into pi and in that case I am able to transform each point on the polygon to a line on a on the real axis in the zeta plane this is on the z plane. So, we have seen that uh, in case uh, in, in fact if we have a triangle or we have a rectangle this criteria holds good and again we have seen that in case of channel this idea this is either a open channel or a closed channel or we may have certain number of change in the Abrupt change in the channel depth, either depth or width, because we can accordingly map it from a point in the z plane to a line in the zeta plane. 
in all the cases we are able to see and uh, that we can always map it by using this transformation what is the Schwarz Christoffel transformation. In fact, uh, in the earlier days by using this transformation large class of problem of the flow in streams due to changes in water depth, changes in breadth of the channel and also in open sea many problems were handled and also flow past uh, several flow inside polygon or flow outside polygons because uh, as I have mentioned that if I have a polygon the inside boundary any point in this boundary will refer to a point on this zeta plane on the upper side of the boundary. So, that means for a flow the fluid flow in a channel and uh, even if in the navigational channel or even if in a canal can always relate it to a flow just considering the flow along a line. And we have seen again one of the example where I have seen that uh, always a uniform flow can be represented to a point source or a sink on this in the zeta plane. So, that way many problems were solved by using this uh, uh, famous uh, Schwarz Christoffel transformation. In fact, in potential flow, we have again seen that uh, the wedge type behavior is we often we are able to analyze the behavior of flow flow behavior flow behavior near a waste type boundary flow behavior near a waste like suppose when uh, this is a kind of waste. So, if we have a fluid is flowing then what happen near this kind of tip and uh, even if uh, we have seen and this uh, theorem has again further application in uh, hydrodynamics particularly coastal engineering in uh, analyzing flow when we have a wave wave scattering problem by barrier wave scattering by barriers particularly to understand the flow behavior at the tip of the barrier when you have a rectangular barriers submerged barriers to understand the flow behavior at the tip this was Christopher theorem helps a, in a big way. In fact, this has been used in many papers in the related to coastal engineering particularly when an, analyze wave scattering problems. So, this is uh, another important result with this uh, we will stop today about the Zukoski transformation and uh, now we will we have talked a lot about this transformation and we have seen the various application of Zukoski transformation in application areas of uh, uh, basically complex uh, when we are able to deal with problems associated with uh, ideal fluids particularly when we, here we are able to define a complex potential phi uh, w that means we have for potential flow problems this uh, complex potential plays a significant role and particularly we have seen that uh, the role of Zukoski transformation, Schwarz Christoffel transformation and other not conformal mappings. So, with this uh, today uh, the series uh, large uh, number of lectures I think I have given 7 or 8 lectures on this conformal mapping with this I will stop here and uh, next time we will go we will talk about we have uh, particularly we will talk about flow there is a cylinder we have talked uh, in a uh, fixed cylinders now we'll talk about moving cylinders and then we'll talk about uh, added mass talk about added mass and the uh, energy associated with the kinetic energy potential energy associated and further few more things we'll talk about this potential flow problem before we go to the wave care uh, understand the wave water waves this i'll remain today thank you